Hey guys, Hydroxid here, and welcome to the Tangent Pipeline, where I'm going through the pipeline on how to make a Tangent. And this time we're looking about UVs and basically making stuff ready for your textures. So you'll see here, this is Maya. On the left, we have some tools for rotation and scrolling. We have some information about the actual pieces that you'll import. But for the first thing, if you follow the previous step, is we want to do is to import those low poly files we just made. So I go to the file import and I locate the files um, that I made from Topogun, which I put in my Tangent folder in a folder called low poly. Since this is the Gara video, I'll be going to that and finding those two pieces. I import first the, well, one low poly, and for each part, the positions of the exploded low polys should still preserve. And um, you see that they import sometimes slow and quite small. Sometimes they import quite big, it just depends on how they're exported, and you can usually scale it at the end to kind of match. But you'll see that this is the head piece I worked with. And now I'm going to locate the actual uh, head piece um, and head. And once that's done, basically you've got your two pieces in there, keep it exploded. What you want to do for symmetrical pieces is because um, your UVs can be mirrored in such a way, is to delete half of them. So what I do here is I, I basically um, see how many triangles I have, see my count is still low enough, I'm under 5,000 by about 930, so I'm doing well for the glass pieces that will remain for this piece. Glass pieces like uh, uh, for Gara and there's other pieces as well, depending on the frame, they can be actually put in their own separate UV, but they still have to honor the 5,000 triangle count. So for the headpiece, they're going to be in one UV because they're, well, the head. Um, but the glasses will um, be on a separate UV um, as their separate piece. So I basically look at these two things. I want to uh, make sure they're not the same object, that they're two individual objects, even though they're in the same viewport. I want to go to face mode because I'm going to delete basically the left hand side of all these faces since this object is perfectly symmetrical. So if I know that they're perfectly symmetrical and I delete the left, delete the left half, if I do UVs and base on the right hand side and just set it to mirror, those UVs will basically float on top of the other UVs. So you basically get um, more space in your texture for um, symmetrical pieces. So what I'm doing here, I'm just making sure that basically I'm going to down the symmetrical line of the in center and making sure that there's no floater bits past that side to make sure it's going to be a clean mirror later on when I kind of flip the, uh, the image. And when I'm happy with one piece, I can then go on to the next piece by just making sure I've right clicked and went up to face mode. And then I go to the faces on the left hand side and make sure they're all cut. So I only have one perfect side uh, for this piece. And once I am happy with my actual piece, I make sure that I want to select both and then turn them into a kind of a combined object so that they'll both be turned into the same UV. So I basically make sure I right click it, each object and go to object mode that I'm treating it as an object, select both, highlight it, and then I go up to mesh and combine. And that will allow me to have it as one object treated um, for this UV. I turn to the side and go up to UV with both selected and go to camera based UV, which means that basically it'll create a UV map based on what I, my current viewport is. When I go up to UV and click UV editor, then I basically will see my UV. And you'll see basically in this new view, I have a wireframe of the view that I have in my actual viewport. So I wanna make sure that uh, there's different views you can see for these islands. Um, some are basically, as you can see how much they're stretched over the grid. Some There's different views, sometimes the black and white grid, the blue and red one is what I usually use to see if it's um, uh, how much are the pixels and the kind of polygons stretched. So if they're too stretched, then some may, uh, baking issues may occur. Um, the other view, the kind of a purple and, and kind of a pink view, allows you to see what's kind of underneath another polygon. So if you have a, a view from the side, there may be bits that are cutting in from another angle, and that's what's represented by the different coloration. Um, but I just want to make sure that I've centered it both. When you have uh, this view, basically this is not done at all, this is just the beginning. We want to start making our islands. So basically where we cut along the edges and we kind of unwrap it like a, a flat... Uh, tortilla wrap if you will if this if the original thing is a burrito and you unwrap it into tortilla 
that's basically what you want to do. Want, so every part can get a piece of the, the baking and we'll have texture later on. So when you're doing seams, basically you want to always make sure you're selecting edges. So on Maya, you right click and go to edge mode. And you basically want to go uh, along sharp edges or edges that are not particularly seen because you can kind of see seams um, uh, when you have textures on them. So I'm looking here basically like the underneath is a pretty good part because it's not going to really be seen. And it's a nice part to kind of make sure that it's not going to be uh, stretched. Um, and then otherwise I'm looking at these kind of really sharp angles or like kind of grooves that I know that if there's a, see uh, a seam in there, they won't be particularly visible. And you'll see it happens a lot where you kind of do something like, oh no, that's not going to be bad, that's not going to be good. Um, obviously if you have long flat shapes, it's great because it's going to be a nice even island. When you have little bits that are quite curvy and that kind of stuff, you still have to kind of honor uh, what's not hidden. So if you have a tube, for example, that's coming out of your, your helmet or something, uh, if you cut along the inside of the tube where the player can't really see, that's the best place to hide a seam. So it's always about kind of making sure you're getting the seam and the, uh, the islands correct, but also not particularly visible. And I know this is kind of quite ironic because I'm guilty of this myself, that sometimes I just put a seam where I shouldn't. Um, but practice makes perfect. So I see here that I'm doing along a, a, a line and then I realize like, oh, I can't uh, select things, so I have to zoom in. And this is the bane of my life with the... Uh, with Maya, it's, uh, sometimes it's just the viewport's a little bit tricky. But I'm now just going to basically go through at the different islands and see the kind of shapes and the lines that I'm going for. You'll notice there's a kind of a pattern to the kind of grooves and the main parts I'm selecting. And I'm going to let this play in the background. And uh, if I have any tips in the meantime, I'll talk, but uh, I'll just speed this up a little bit. Um, because once you do this, it's pretty rinse and repeat. Um, until we get to the final part where we lay out all the islands uh, individually. Uh, basically, you're just right-clicking, going to your edge selection, going to the islands and mark them out. And once they're all done, uh, I like to do a lot of them together. So I kind of have a good map to make sure there's nothing um, uh, missing. Because if you have unmissing edges and they're not completely cut, then when you try to uh, lay them out and then unfold them, uh, basically there's going to be kind of some uh, uh, stretching and uh, issues. So you want to make sure you have complete cuts the entire time. Um, but yeah, I'll just let it play in the background and I'll get back to you in, well, a few seconds of the video time. So it looks like I'm basically happy with how the islands are marked out. I'm going back to my UV editor and I want to cut. So I go up to polygons, down to the cut UV edges, and that will basically cut the mesh into the lines I have. I click this tool up here, which kind of lets me to move the islands. And you'll see that I can now drag out the islands from where they were cut on the model. And obviously they're still not unfolded yet. They're, they're a little bit messy, um, but I'll show you with the kind of tool that I use in the Maya to basically uh, on this. So one whole thing turned to five. It's this little one here that looks like an unfolded uh, jigsaw. And basically you just hold and click and it starts uh, unfolding your piece. And you're looking for kind of a color discoloration here. So red and blue to make sure that um, um, there's really none there. White is perfect. Um, if there's red and blue, that means that's slightly stretched, which means that sometimes like if you have a triangle or something else, it might not be the kind of uh, the best scenario. And you might want to re uh, stitch it. And you can just control Z to go back until you, you haven't uh, cut the seams yet and just make sure you have any edits there. Um, but once these are all done, basically just unfolding them all, make sure they're all good. Later, when we do an unfold, it basically maximizes them and stretches them. Um, there is a really good inbuilt uh, button called Unfold 3D for this. Um, you see I'm circling kind of areas of red, which means that basically that needs to be cut to open up because there's too much uh, tension. I, like, I call it tension, but basically um, 
it's a bit of stretching and as you cut things the model uh, updates live behind you so you'll be able to see live where the kind of tensions are so I see that there's kind of a weird polygon shape here so I'm going to see if I, by cutting that will it relieve the kind of uh, the tension on uh, uh, on the actual uh, piece and it did so that one worked a lot of the time doesn't and most of the time I just resort to crying and just like you know stress um, and I always save at these points then actual uh, Maya binary to make sure that if something happens, like if it crashes or something goes wrong, I save it over time. I usually save that the end kind of a uh, uh, exploded view with UVs and a merged view with UVs. Um, so I always have, if something goes really, really wrong, I have the two states where I can kind of work with. So I always kind of go back between uh, merged and uh, exploded because at the very end when we do our baking, Basically, we'll use our exploded view to bake the details onto the exploded uh, low poly part with UVs built into it. And then we just swap the actual um, exploded view for the merged low poly. And then the textures keep the same in the later. It's really good. Um, so I'm just going to do now here, as you see, I'm just going to go over to the helmet and keep the same kind of rules. I already see there's a lot of points of kind of tension on this model. And um, I'm basically just going to cut out the parts I think would be the best islands. And once again, I'll get back to you once we're finished and on the next part. Now, once again, as you can see, I'm kind of actually looking for a uh, an easy way to get rid of this little, uh, piece of red. And usually this is kind of down to triangles. So I kind of see if there's a way to cut the triangle to open up. Um, and it's basically always triangles fault. Um, you want to do as many polygons uh, that are, you know, uh, uh, what's the word for them? Rectangles, yes. Um, as much as possible. Obviously some triangles are okay, but um, triangles do can leave a point, especially... Um, for UVs and as you see that if I move it over here a little bit and unfold it that one little cut I did eased up all the tension completely which is great um, like a great kind of plastic surgery basically um, so once I'm happy with all these I basically want to unfold it now so basically all these parts are uneven in terms of how much they cover the grid they should all be kind of semi-uniform that means they take the texture well so I'm selecting them all here I'm going up to polygons I'm basically going to select the unfold uh, Sorry, the layout button. The layout gives me all these different things, settings. Um, the unfold 3D makes sure it's selected as a better plugin. The packing resolution for things, I use 2048 because it's one of the uh, parameters of your helmet textures. Um, there's different settings about how much you want to rotate it, you want more steps, how many like iterations you want to do to fill it up. Um, once again, make sure the texture map size is 2048. Uh, shell padding 8, tile padding 4, they're just things I work with because I think it's better. Make sure the full square is actually used because in the end we export as a half kind of a resolution. We want to pack the full square and basically the uniform scale mode will try to apply a uniform scaling well to all the parts. When you click UV, basically because my computer is very, very bad and very old, it takes a little while, but it's basically going to go through how many iterations you've defined. I think I have down as two iterations, so it'll do two runs to see what the best optimum part is. And the idea is you want to kind of make sure that the square is filled as much as possible, but also that the individual polygons of your islands all have kind of a uniform uh, take up of the model. Now, obviously, if something is not seen, like the underneath of a helmet or another inter intersected part, and that's a unique island, you can kind of give it a smaller part because you can't really see it. But um, generally, you want to make sure that everything is very, very uniform um, so that when you bake details, basically none of the details and the texture maps will be stretched or blurry or pulled in such a weird way. That's kind of how they work. Um, and that's kind of where um, the next part of the video will be um, how to do all the baking kind of stuff. But we're getting up to the point where we're basically going to get our UVs done. We're going to have an exported model of exploded. 
that also merged with the UVs and that will lead us right up to the second last part of how to make a Tenogen model. Um, but once again, as I'm just kind of uh, talking you through this process as my computer, as you see, is doing very, very slow, I'm going to kind of uh, speed this up a little bit and then see uh, how we can mirror the UVs and show you how that all works. And now the thing is done, as you can see, I've got my UV all unfolded, laid out really nicely. Um, it's not covering the entire square, which you kind of really want to. So I'm just going to basically kind of look at the different views to make sure that those checker boxes are evenly distributed across the entire model, which they kind of look except for some parts, but that's usually something we can change by just skewing and scaling some parts. Um, I'm basically just going to move it to cover as much as possible to make sure the islands are not too close together. Um, and then we basically kind of just go through the model and make sure it's ready. And then once that's done, all we have to do is mirror it. Um, and yeah. So it's all laid out, I saved my model, now we're going to mirror it. So basically this is done still separately. I want to make sure I'm selecting both in object view. So I right click the thing, turn to object mode, select both. I go up then to mesh, I go to triangulate to make sure it's kind of, you know, nice and even. You don't have to do this, I like to do it um, for funsies. And then go to edit mesh and then, oh sorry, I went to mesh display, when to soften it, and then you get to see kind of how it looks like in-game. So it does not go that rough, rough square uh, look. It does have this kind of look here with the low poly. Um, and then I want to go to my tools to make sure that kind of when I mirror it, I know what I'm starting with. I go to mirror, and you see that now basically they're joined really small. And you see the effect it has in the UVs as well. As I pull it out, I want to match the shape of the original helmet. So you can import at this point even another... Uh, of the, the two low polys together and see if you're going to match exactly. You can import the high poly if you can. My computer can't. Um, and I basically want to make sure that I'm, go I'm going to merge these points together um, and make sure that kind of as close as possible. Some people have different ways of doing this. I just try to get it as, as by eye, but I can see by the red line in the middle how close they actually are. It just depends on kind of, you know, how precise you want to be. Obviously, I do recommend being as precise and neat as possible because, uh, you know, being lazy does not help. Um, and when you look at this object as the actual kind of in the UV editor, you'll see one half of the settings I have here. Um, you can flip the UVs and turn off the, you know, the way the, the offset of these parts are going. I just like having it underneath one another. So you'll see basically only one half the UVs, but then a mirrored image of for the other half is actually placed underneath the same islands. So you can't see it, but it's underneath there. Um, so whatever you paint on one side will mirror evenly to the other side. At this point, basically, I'm just trying to get it all evened out. And there's some issues I have here um, with some selections of um, the objects that are not kind of going through. I want to go to File, Export, and then make sure that um, I can actually export the, this model we have here. Because once you have it mirrored and you have the UV done, then basically you can just export this, this version. This is your one you're going to use for your baking. This is the mirrored, exported, exploded UV low poly. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, and we want one with the merge as well. So I'm just going to fast forward this pit where I have all the problems and we get to the part where I actually export successfully and I show you how to kind of uh, merge the two parts together to look like the final product where it will look like in-game because obviously you cannot have this version where things are exploded and just have them in-game because then you have floating parts and unless that's the look you're going for. Um, a floating headdress on a helmet about, uh, probably about a good two feet above is not what I'm kind of going for. So, once everything is exported, and I'm happy, which is not very rarely with this kind of stuff, I usually like to kind of, uh, things don't really go easily, and if things go easily and you're doing Tenogen, something's wrong. Unless you've been very competent or you work at DE. Um, so at the point where I kind of I export my thing, it's successful, I want to kind of select, uh, make sure both of the objects are not combined anymore, so I can select both, I can go to Mesh and Separate. I select the top headdress to make sure that's kind of, um, 
the one I want to do. On the left-hand side, I have controls about where I want to uh, to uh, kind of uh, interact with it. I want to do the obviously the the move tool, which is the kind of the square with the arrows about it. I select the piece. I get my little coordinates above. If you click modify and go to center pivot, it'll put the tool in the middle of that. Um, otherwise, it might go down to the floor. And I'm basically just dragging it down to match what my original look was. Um, to make sure on both sides that it matches. Obviously, I have some bits that are. Uh, good references because I have a very neat clipped lip here on top of the headdress so I know where that should rest on the part and I'm basically just going to use it um, uh, to make my final model I want. Now once again at this point you can also import that low poly decimated version or one of your high poly version of the merged piece from uh, ZBrush and then use that once again to line it up. You can scale it here as well to make sure it's going to line up exactly. Um, you want to get as close to the original high poly as possible so your baking is best. And that's the point where it's just kind of fine tuning. Once again, if you save the part at where we just exported the mirrored model with the exploded uh, uh, UV part, um, and then I usually get this point and I save it as a separate file. So I'll always have my Maya file where it's exploded and have UVs done. And also where it kind of is merged and has UVs done. Because if anything goes wrong, I have those files separated. And I can go back to tweak as necessary for um, for baking. So once I have this uh, all saved up, basically we're good to go. And you're ready to do your texturing. Which will be the future video. Um, once I have free time to record the next part. But this is basically where we use uh, ZBrush. Uh, not that brush, Substance Painter. And Substance Painter is a tool that's done by uh, uh, Algorithmic, and it's a really good tool. They have different plans available. You can buy it in Steam, the Steam sales. It usually comes down really good at Christmas. They also have a subscription-based model, which allows you to pay like uh, things like 20 euros per month. And uh, you can really just get the software until you, then you really do subscription until you pay the software price. Then they give you the software unlocked for uh, full so it's a really good they really have it done very well um just some summary to make sure that basically you delete half the model spaces if it's symmetric if it's un asymmetric only delete the faces of the symmetric parts and make sure that you're going to work with uvs of the full part that's separated or different you don't want to do um half for asymmetric parts because they should be treated as separate um, it's a very similar process in terms of that instead of deleting half, you leave it whole. But the final thing where you make your uh, UV, you merge that part with the other part parts as a whole combined object. And then basically you do your UVs from there. So that's the only difference of, of asymmetric parts. If it's an asymmetric part, just do it as whole. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Make sure your seams are hidden as much as possible. And if, they don't, if they're not, again, strong lines. And... Uh, export and save every part you can. So export the merged, export the exploded, save the exploded, save the merged, and you should be good for the next part, which would be texture baking and tint masks. And I will see you very, very soon.